cute. This is so cute and super small too. All right, what do we got here? So we have macro mode. Okay, display. So it's got histogram and also a grid, which is good all the time. And we have flash and to zoom. It's not super fast, but faster than I, I thought it would be actually. Oh, it's got this little, I should have read this, shouldn't I? Five times optical zoom, Jesus Christ, 28 millimeter. This is great. Like if you're used to your phone, like the One X camera, or even the Ricoh GR series, you're you're going to be so familiar with the 28 millimeter. It's like a do it all lens, especially when you want to capture like all the memories, everything in front of you. It's not super wide, but wide enough to the point where you can make people who's looking at your photo feel like they're also in there with you because you're in the action at the moment. If you know what I mean. I forgot to mention, all of the photos today is gonna to be straight out of the camera from this Kodak Pix, Pix Pro FZ55. So yeah, no color grading, no any color creation whatsoever. So the very first time that I saw this camera was on Amazon and it had like five or six reviews, very bad ones. It was like two stars or something. And now this camera is like one of the best selling cameras in Japan. Okay, I think I broke it. It's not turning off and it's not taking photos. I think I need to take the battery out in order to turn this off. Let me try that. And that didn't even work. I think what happened was that my battery was like totally drained. It was so low to the point where it couldn't turn itself off. And maybe I was expecting too much because there wasn't even any low battery indication.
this camera is very small. It's even smaller than the Ricoh that I have over here. And the Ricoh is already very pocketable. Not, not exactly right now because I have the, the mist filter on here. But usually when I have without it, it's always in my pocket. But this one over here, it even fits in my coin pocket. And that's how small this is. And only of this camera is not the best, but it's not bad considering its size. I mean, this is it, what you're seeing here. There are some friction dots right at the thumb rest over here. But I mean, that kind of helps. But I also kind of wish that they have some of those dots down at the bottom where you can access the SD card and battery because without those this is not exactly easy to open. Now do keep in mind that this camera is very slow because you have to rely on the slow auto focus and there's no zone focus I mean obviously and it's not exactly the kind of slow that you want like like a film camera because with this camera you're just waiting there half press focus and then you take this you know take the shot and then you still also have to wait a little bit there's a lot of waiting. And while you're waiting, you're, you're, there's nothing you can do. You have to kind of hold it there and hold, like just wait for it to finish taking the shot. With the film camera, you obviously you fit around with the camera settings and then maybe also manual focusing, you know, try to get the shot, try to focus on the subject. Or even maybe after camera setting, you, you have zone focus ready, you just take the shot and if you need it faster. And that's like the fastest way to focus anything really. But with this, you, you just hold it there, take the shot, and you're not done yet. You kind of have to wait a little bit. Because I realized that a lot of shots were blurry, but not because like there's not enough light. There was like plenty of light, but it was still blurry because I took the shot and I thought it's done and I moved and I was like way too quick I guess I was too you know too used to the recoil where I can just snap the shot and then go and then with with snap focus it's also super quick I just snap and that's it doesn't really have to focus but with this you really have to stay there a little bit before you like well after you take the shot and then you can leave or else your photo is going to be blurry. I mean, you'll get used to it and get the timing right once you play a lot more with this camera, but still, it's a little, it's a little bit awkward. The quality of the photo out of this camera is just very bad. I'm not trying to discourage or disappoint the new generation of photography enthusiasts out there. Like if you have this camera and you, if you're using this camera, by all means, go play around with it. Take lots of photos, that's how you get better. But the quality is its just not there. And that is totally fine. It's got its own niche, like it's a very affordable point-and-shoot camera that looks like back in the days. 